Hi, I'm Janice Fogarty, and I'm a communications strategist and consultant. The Connections Coffee Confidence Podcast is for professional women entrepreneurs who have established themselves and their business, and they're ready to get serious about using the power of communication to surpass their business goals. On this podcast, I discuss everything from leadership to establishing a business vision to the intricacies of creating messaging, publicity, and more. I speak to women who excel in communications in their business, whatever they do, and get an inside look at how they created a thriving livelihood. So top up your mug and welcome to this week's episode. Hello and welcome to the Connections Coffee and Confidence podcast with me, Janice. Now, this might surprise you, but one of my earliest dreams was to work at Dairy Queen. And if you aren't in a country lucky enough to have a Dairy Queen, let me break your heart by telling you what you're missing. It's a fast food chain that, yes, offers hot food, but the real beauty is that they offer treats like blizzards, where they take their ice cream, which is actually ice milk, but we're not going to split hairs here, and they blitz it with candy pieces and flavors of your choice. Oh, and dipped ice cream cones and sundaes and banana splits, and my personal favorite, the peanut buster parfait, which is layers of ice cream with hot fudge sauce and peanuts. So when a new DQ opened up in the town I lived in in high school, I took myself down there and I got a job. Just like that, I fulfilled one of my life's goals. Okay, so fortunately, I had other goals left to conquer, such as becoming a published author. And I've actually been published publicly before in magazines and newspapers in Canada and in Ireland, but not under my own name, because usually I do for others what you do for your own business. Right. You might not think of yourself as a writer. You might shudder in horror or laugh your head off at the idea of you being a writer. But trust me when I say you are a writer. Off the top of my head, I know that you write emails, text messages, social media posts, for sure. And you probably write product or service descriptions, maybe a sales page, website, landing page words. You write. Something that's often asked about when people join my private Facebook group is writing. Getting confident in writing. Knowing what to write about and how to do those things with comfort and ease. Okay, comfort and ease are my words, but people ask about writing a lot. And when I talk to them, it's because they aren't comfortable. It doesn't come easy, therefore it's hard. So today I'm bringing you 10 tips on gaining writing confidence. These aren't in a strategic order. You don't need to start at number one and master it before you move to number two, not at all. You pick what you need, as you need it. Work on it, try it out. The tip you focus on could well depend on the situation you find yourself in, and that's just right too. I'll start with this tip, I'll call number one, and it's sort of ironically called, get started. The worst thing to do is to stare at that blinking cursor, the one that seems to reappear in a slow, kind of laughing rhythm. Put some words down and break that rhythm. Often, the first few words are the hardest, uh, sometimes they're the least sensible or the most muddled, but they are words and those words lead to more and better words. And that's what you're after. So get started. Second tip is to practice. Keep doing it. You might not feel like writing or rewriting that sales page, and that's cool. But if you know it's something that needs to be done, Take a practice run at it. You aren't committing to anything. You're just practicing. Take the pressure off the act of writing. Just try it out. And if some gold happens to fly from your fingertips, well, that's a bonus. Copy and paste it into the real version of whatever you were practicing. Now, you may have expected me to say practice, like write the same thing 15 times. And if that works for you, then do it. I know I write about four or five, sometimes more, titles for my episodes. 
but really any more than that and I just drive myself crazy. I use a headline analyzer and I check the SEO and the readability for each title and I pick the one that works the best and I roll. But I always have those practice headlines to help me. Another note about practice is that Seth Godin has written in his blog every day for well over a decade. I know. Boggles the mind. And he talks about how not every post is solid gold. But it's practice. And if it works for him to show up and practice every day, uh, there's probably no harm in us trying it more days than not, eh? And speaking of not everything being solid gold, the third tip is do not expect perfection. Oh, there is nothing to kill that creativity, to stifle your ability to access words from your brain, than the pressure of writing and making it super awesome. Oh, and, and awesome on the first go. Oh, it's better to be done and done well now than to be perfect in... Okay, well, you and I both know that things are just never going to be perfect. So do it to the best of your ability and move on. Fourth is a common piece of advice from me. Have a point. Nothing helps focus your work like, well, having a focus. If you have a goal that you're working towards, you'll find it much easier to decide what to say and to say it well. This is where my e-guide on messaging can help you. It's a workbook that walks you from your goals to your messaging and helps you find that focus. I'll link to it in the show notes and you can also just go to JaniceFogarty.com to see for yourself. But when you know what you're talking about, when you know what the end result will be, that will always help shape what you actually say and you'll say it with confidence. Fifth is to keep in mind who you're talking to. It's much easier to communicate with someone when you know who they are. Have you ever gone to a party that your friend begged you to go to with them where you don't really know anyone other than that one friend and then you don't quite know how to speak to people straight away? Yeah, but once you've had a chance to chit chat a little bit, get to know a little bit about the people in the crowd, it's easier to talk. You know if you're in a room full of master's degrees, entrepreneurs, stay-at-home parents, married couples, single parents, employees, friends, colleagues, whoever. Once you know who you're talking to, you know how to communicate with them. It's part of being strategic as a communicator. You know who your audience is. Tip number six for gaining confidence in writing is to ask yourself why the person you're talking to cares. And this isn't the same as what's your point. This tip is about the audience, the person or people you're speaking to in your writing. You can think of it as being generous with your intentions, if that makes it easier for you. It's often easier to write when we hold in our minds what it is the recipient will find value in from your words. It's not just a sales tactic. It's helpful in all writing. Tip number seven is to give it time and space. This is a phrase I've borrowed from child psychology, child rearing, whatever, from being a parent. But it exactly describes what works for me every single time in my work. This is commonly known as editing, but honestly, I struggle to edit my own words. I reread it exactly as it's meant to be read or spoken. I go off of what was in my head versus what's actually on the page or the screen, so I miss the goofs. My brain fills in what was supposed to be there, so I miss the gaps. I need to give my work time, as in, don't rush the edit to publish. And space, as in, think of something different, go do something else, before I go back to edit, so I can do so with a clear brain that may have forgotten the details that were flowing through me when I was originally creating, making it easier to catch what I originally missed putting down. Do you follow me? And sometimes that's not possible. 
I know I'm not the only one who, hmm, shall we say, doesn't always plan the best, or is stricken with the inspiration that you simply must post right now, this minute, which does not allow for space and time editing. Or life simply happens and you got to publish it now, or it becomes less timely and you've missed making your impact. And that's where tip eight comes in. Say it. So actually, this works in two ways. So you pick which suits you. First, whatever you've written, whatever for, whoever for, read it out loud. Not in your head, out loud. And you'll catch what you've missed, at least most of it. When I was a speechwriter for a government minister, you can bet your last dollar that I not only paid attention to how she spoke, her rhythms, and her speaking style, but I also read every speech out loud before handing it over to anyone else. So I caught the things, the awkward phrases that read well on the page, but people don't really speak like that, or the less than perfect word to make that point. Reading it out loud made it, whatever it was, better. Try it. The second way this works is to say it out loud first, then transcribe it. I like to write. But I recently had someone reach out to me from my past for help, and in the third email he sent me, he commented that he didn't remember me being so chatty. And that's because I'm comfortable in my writing. Uh, but it's also because I'm now over 40, I'm a mom to three neurodiverse boys, and a wife to someone with a strong personality. I'm not the exact same person who he knew all those years ago. That's the same as you. Your experiences shape your voice. So if your voice comes more naturally to you when you speak or sing or whatever verbal exercise works for you, then do that and take what you need for your writing. You might think that you're only good at going live when your communication strength comes from the actual verbalization, but that's not reusing your content creation in the most efficient way. So go back over some of your really great lives. I know you have them and pull the quotes or even like full paragraphs worth of words and repurpose them into posts, into pages, into descriptions, into whatever it is that you need. And they'll be absolutely brilliant because they capture your best voice and your message. And they'll appeal to those in your audience who prefer to read than listen. Tip number nine on how to write with more confidence is to personalize it. Now, it might be another way of saying be authentic, but it feels less catchphrase of the moment and more, well, like me. How would you say that, whatever that is, how would you say that to a friend, to your sister, to that coworker you used to really enjoy chatting and having a laugh with? When you can speak as you would to someone that you're comfortable with, how would you say it then? Can you capture that for your material? Can you relate it to something that's happened to you or worked for you or you've seen in others? Because sometimes it's easier to speak about something that happened to us like it happened to someone else. And that's okay. Because you'll tell that story in a wonderfully clear way. Because you have full confidence in the details. And that clarity, those details, they make the communications feel good for both you and your audience. And when you feel good, you'll be more confident to do it again. Last, but not least, and actually perhaps the most important tip of all is number 10. Have fun. Seriously, when's the last time you were just living in that moment, laughing your head off, or feeling so full up with contentment, at peace and smiling because that's where you were meant to be at that moment and you knew it. Not concerned if you had the right word, if you looked good, or what someone else might think. What platform, what time of day, what clothing, what setting, what style of delivery feels really good for you? Do that. Sure, you can't always choose what's the most fun, but you can recapture that feeling of having fun and inject it into whatever you're doing in the moment, like writing. 
try saying to yourself straight up and out loud, holy heck, I am having fun. I'm friggin' loving this. <laughs> or however it is that you might speak to yourself in moments of great enjoyment. Your brain will follow along. It wants what's best for you. And if you tell it that you are having fun writing copy for your sales page or your product descriptions, well, it's all in on the fun and it won't notice that you're actually doing work. The better you feel doing that work, the more confident you'll become in doing it. So there you have it. My top 10 tips for gaining confidence in your writing. And really, I think you can extrapolate these tips to all communications. You want confidence when you communicate. And that doesn't mean that you aren't nervous sometimes or you aren't scared every once in a while. It just means that you do it anyway and that you do your best to do a better job every time you try. So don't forget that if you want help in your messaging, you can download my guide and workbook from my website or you can pop me an email and we can book an appointment to see where I can help. In the meantime, I really want to know which tip stood out to you the most. So write it down. Tag me on Instagram at Janice E. Fogarty so I can see. And until next week, my friend, have a fan freaking tastic rest of your day. Thanks so much for listening this week. I invite you to sign up for my email list or join me in the Connections Coffee and Confidence community on Facebook. Those are the people who get first dibs on any classes or products I create and they benefit from the extras I can't get into in a podcast format. I also lovingly request that if you've enjoyed this podcast, you leave a review on Apple. When I see a new review, I get so excited, I almost spill my cappuccino froth. Almost. And if you're a woman entrepreneur who's ready to get serious about using the power of communications to grow your business, send me an email at Janice at JaniceFogarty.com. All my details are in the show notes. Thank you again for listening today, and I'll chat with you again next week.